Let me start this video in this unit by highlighting a differential equation technique that I've used a couple of times so far, but is worth highlighting for its surprising importance to the field. This technique is just this, guessing that the solution has a certain form or type of function. Then, after guessing, the guess is put into the differential equation to see if it works. The guess needs to be a bit general, so it will have unknown parameters or even unknown functions in it. Putting it in the DEA, DE is a way to figure out what these parameters and functions are, thus determining the solution. Why do these guesses work? Well, the subject as I present it is a final product, but the road is full of dead ends. Many guesses have been made and most of them incorrect. The few correct guesses that have been made have stuck around, and now they form the core of these solution techniques. It's sometimes a surprise to students that solutions involve guessing, instead of just some kind of more direct solving. It turns out that there is a limit to just how much direct solving one can do. To go from a complicated DE to the function it indicates is very difficult. Often there isn't a direct path. Thus, guess and test becomes a core practice in mathematics. For this whole unit, we are likewise going to make a guess. The guess is quite general. We will guess that the solutions are some functions which can be represented by an infinite series. These are called analytic functions, functions which have a Taylor series. Equivalently, they are any infinitely differentiable function. This is the basic setup of a Taylor series. There is a center point alpha, there are powers of t minus alpha, and there are coefficients cn. Knowing the coefficients and the center point is enough to know the entire function. The series will converge on some radius of convergence. So I will focus on the center points and the coefficients. In this unit, I'll be solving second order linear differential equations again. However, now I'll allow for the possibility that the coefficients are non-constant. This is the setup for the entire unit. I'll divide through by any coefficient of the second derivative and use p and q for these two coefficients. I'll stick to homogeneous equations, so no forcing, although the harmonic motion interpretation still makes sense here. There are two ways of using series to solve these equations. The first is the subject of this video, and it is the more approachable of the two. The technique all depends upon the choice of the center point of the series. Where do I want to center the Taylor series to try and find a solution? So, consider centering a Taylor series at some number alpha. Does that alpha work well with the differential equation? Well, I can consider if the functions p and q are nice functions at that point. If p and q are both analytic at alpha, that is, infinitely differentiable at alpha, then alpha is called an ordinary point for the DE. At ordinary points, the series solution will always work. If either p and q are not analytic at alpha, then alpha is called a singular point, and I'll cover these in a few videos later. What do I mean that the series solution always works at an ordinary point? Well, I mean that at an ordinary point, I am guaranteed two linearly independent series solutions centered at that point with positive radius of convergence. And that's a solution, two functions with some domain including the point I care about. Before I finish, let me make a short note on radius of convergence. I can't give you a full theorem on what radius to expect, but I will give you some intuition. The radius of convergence will usually be the distance to the edge of the domain of p or q, whichever is smaller. So if this is centered at 3, but p is undefined at 7, I would expect a radius of 4 and maybe less. This is not a sort of official and always reliable. The radius might be smaller, but as an intuition, you can often assume that the radius will be the distance to the nearest undefined point of the coefficient functions. So here is an outline of the method. I'll just give an outline, since this is much easier to see in examples, which will come in the next video. First, I find an ordinary point, some point where the coefficients are analytic. Then I write down the series centered at that point. Then I calculate the first and second derivative of that series. Then I put the series back in the differential equation and try to solve for the coefficients. If I can solve for the coefficients, well, then I have the coefficients and the center point, so I have the entire series, I have the entire function, I have the solution. That's the idea. 
In the next video, we'll get into examples.